About half of children with type 2 diabetes won't achieve a durable glycemic control with metformin alone. So we compared the uh, metformin alone to a, uh, a pharmacologic intensification using uh, rosiglitazone, um, uh, which was selected because at the time that made a lot of sense. It was becoming a popular drug and had a number of attractive characteristics. And we also compared it to the addition of a lifestyle uh, intervention, a very intensive one-on-one -on -one family-based behavioral uh, intervention. We actually saw statistical differences by about 18 months. Uh, at that time, uh, metformin um, uh, was less effective than metformin plus rosiglitazone with metformin plus lifestyle intermediate and that same pattern continued to the very end of the study. Um, the median time to failure, however, was about 11 to 12 months. Um, there are also some pretty interesting um, gender differences and ethnicity, uh, racial and ethnic differences. Uh, yes, correct. So uh, what we saw is that uh, girls were particularly responsive to the addition of rosiglitazone with very little effect of lifestyle, uh, whereas for the boys, uh, lifestyle appeared to be somewhat more effective, although it never reached uh, statistical significance. And African Americans uh, did particularly uh, poorly uh, they had they had higher rates of failure, but in particular, uh, failure with uh, metformin uh, was surprisingly um, uh, bad, such that nearly 50% of the kids had failed by about 12 months of uh, of the study on metformin alone. So this underscores the importance of individualizing treatment. I guess which everybody knows, but but we don't always do. <laughs> Right. Someone comes in and we say, oh, this, you know, the first drug you use is metformin, but in fact, maybe we need to be thinking, well, this is an African-American kid or this is an African-American girl. Uh, maybe she would really particularly benefit from addition of a second drug. Uh, this is an African-American boy. Maybe he would uh, respond better, at least for a while, to, a, to some lifestyle uh, intervention, etc. And finally, does the study tell us anything about uh, the length of time that a clinician would, would allow a treatment to go on before changing things up a bit? So I don't think it tells us that yet. I think we actually have the data to be able to provide some information. And, and I, having looked at some initial analyses, I'm somewhat optimistic that we will be able to tell people uh, based on things at the time of diagnosis, who is the most likely to do well and who is less likely to do well. Um, I think the one thing we do know now is we shouldn't let it go on for very long. And I know the one practice that I've changed is if I have a kid comes back at eight or nine or ten months and their A1C is rising, I'm less likely to just yell at them about their adherence um, because it may very well be that they are in fact taking their medicine, but from today we realize that the medicine is no longer working for them. You're not, uh, you're not advocating rosiglitazone as an add-on at this point? No, we're not advocating rosiglitazone as an add-on. As, as people know, it's highly restricted because of concerns about cardiovascular disease in adults. We don't know the relevance of those, of those problems in the kids, uh, who obviously are much younger, have less underlying cardiac disease. Uh, however, um, it's highly restricted. Uh, I think the way we look at the study and the way we looked at it really from the very beginning was that this was a principle of adding combination therapy uh, early in, in, in onset of these kids.